Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is an assembly video for our ultrasonic rangefinder kit. The kit is very simple. It is a, an ultrasonic rangefinder unit. Uh, a 40 kilohertz signal is produced by an, uh, a 555 timer configured in a stable mode to output 40 kilohertz. Um, <clears throat> that's fed through the ultrasonic transmitter. Uh, if something breaches the uh, depth of field, it is bounced back and received and amplified by the receiver transducer and you can interface that signal with your Arduino or your other device. So this does all the work, you do all the programming. This is hardware only. So I have another video that shows you how to use it. Uh, I even show you uh, the signal on the oscilloscope because depending on the distance between the uh, item breaching the field, uh, depending on how far away it is, the received frequency is different. Um, if, if your hand is very, very close to the module, the frequency is much higher, whereas if it's uh, a meter or two away, it is much, it's a much lower frequency. So today I'm just going to show you how to put one together. So let me show you the components. So here are the components that come with the kit. you got your custom PCB, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, uh, a 3-pin header, two two-pin headers, a two-pin header connector, a 78055 volt regulator, a two-pin terminal block, um, two 1.2k ohm resistors, a, a 555 timer with a an 8-pin socket on the back, a 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a, an on-off switch, uh, two 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitors, and of course the ultrasonic rangefinder module. So first of all, let's put in our resistors and our capacitors. It might be a little bit difficult to see, but if you're looking at this board in front of you, it's been shipped to you, you've purchased it, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. Now, the two resistors, same value, go in the R1 and R2 slots, labeled 1.2K R1 and 1.2K R2. No, res no uh, polarity on the resistor, so don't worry about it. The 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C3 slot. Now, the left pin on the C3 slot, from this perspective, has a plus sign above it. Make sure that the long lead of the electrolytic capacitor goes in that hole, in the left hole, and that the short lead goes in the right. The uh, electrolytic capacitor is polarized, and you have to make sure that you place in the right, the right polarity, or else when you power it up, it will likely blow up or get damaged. So again, positive is long, uh, negative is short. On the footprint, from this perspective, there is a positive, a plus sign above the left hole, long lead in the left hole, short lead in the right hole. Don't reverse that. Now, there are the two, the three ceramic capacitors. There's two values here: 0 0.1 micro and 10 nano. There's two 10 nanos. The 10 nanos are actually on the board labeled 0.01 U for 0 0.01 micro, which is 10 nano, and the single 0 0.1 microfarad, uh, which is physically a little bit bigger, uh, is the 0 0.1 micro, and that is uh, is labeled 104. The smaller ones are labeled 103. Now on the board, C4 is 0.1 U, so that's C4 is the single 0 0.1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and the two slots C1 and C2 are labeled 0.01 U. So make sure you place the smaller uh, capacitors in those slots. Now those are ceramic; they're not polarized. You can place them in either way as long as you use the right values. So solder those in place, make it as neat as possible, no shorts. Next we will do our switch, our terminal block, and our pin headers. So you have three pin headers. And they go in this slot, three pin header, two pin header, and two pin header. Now, this two pin header is labeled uh, RX and ground. So that is your receive receivable signal. If you don't want to use your header, just solder directly to those two holes. Uh, this header is only important if you want to interface uh, with this board and offer your own signal because you can put your own signal on it. You don't have to rely on the 555 timer. You can independently put on a signal between, say, 30 and 50 kilohertz if you want to experiment with it. And these three pins are labeled VCC, which is a regulated 5 volts, XT for the uh, external signal that you're going to be inputting if you choose to input, and another ground, GND. So if you want to, you can you have the option of putting a three-pin header on there to connect to, or you can simply, if you choose to use it, you can solder to those uh, pads. Now this is a very important one. This two-pin header right here is labeled 555 underscore en for five 
five five enable. Now, if you uh, if you put that two pin header on in there and you connect it, if you short it with the two pin header connector, then the five 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 timer will successfully send a forty kilohertz signal to the ultrasonic transmitter receiver module, which we have not put on yet. So in normal default mode, make sure that you put a two pin a two pin header there and that you short it with the two pin header connector. The two pin terminal block has a terminal side and it has a plastic side. Make sure that the terminal side fits facing outward of the board. Make sure it's facing out. If you have it facing in, you're never going to be able to wire in your power supply. So, like so. Now, the switch. On one side of the switch, you might be able to see it, there's a little indent in the middle. On the footprint, there is a little indent on the top here. So, from a bird's eye view, make sure that the dent on the one side is facing the upper side of the board or the dent on the footprint which you might may or may not be able to see from this perspective now when you place it in you have to make sure that it, you have to make sure all of the holes are lined up it's the trickiest component of the board to get fit in to, to, to fit into the board don't force it just gently line it up at 90 degrees and gently fiddle with it and once all of the, the hole once all of the leads the five leads find all five of the holes it should settle in nicely and you can push it down flush to the board now you need a fine solder, fine soldering iron to get the, th the the five pin soldered so be very careful not to short anything or else it will always be on or always be off so solder those components in and actually we'll do our 555 timer our uh, socket rather our 7805 and we will then we will finally do our ultrasonic transmitter receiver module 7805 has a front side with black on it in writing. It should say 7805. On the back, there is essentially a whitish gray, which is actually ground. Now, on the board, you might have trouble seeing it, but there is a white stripe on the back side of the 7805 footprint. Make sure that the back of the chip, the white side of the chip, faces the white stripe on the footprint and that the front side is facing the blue terminal block. If you turn that around, it will not regulate to 5 volts once you plug in your power supply. The socket, the 8-pin socket, has a notch on the left-hand side. Uh, the 555 timer has a notch on the left-hand side. The footprint, labeled NE555, has a notch on the left-hand side. From a bird's eye view, be very careful to ensure that the notches all face each other. If you uh, if you plug in the 555 timer with the notch facing in the wrong direction, consider your 555 timer burnt and useless. Lastly, the ultrasonic transmitter uh, receiver module has four pins labeled VCC, Trig, Echo, and Ground. On the board, uh, there is VCC, Trig, Echo, and Ground. The transducers have to face outside. So like this. So just pop it in, make sure it's flush to the board, solder it, and then we are done. We will then do a quick test. When the ultrasonic device is not detecting anything, uh, it consumes about 10 milliamps. And when something is very close, it makes an audible whine at high frequency pitch and consumes about 30 milliamps. Um, so you might be able to pick that up. I'm not sure if the camera can pick up that high frequency pitch. Anyway, I'm going to take my trusty oscilloscope and I'm going to probe the uh, the output of the 555 timer to this. I'm going to probe, sorry, the ultrasonic receive signal, the RX signal. I'm going to probe it so you can see it on the oscilloscope. Um, but as for power, the switch is in the on position. Uh, there is a the two-pin terminal block has two pins labeled uh, G and D for DC ground and uh, V plus. So you can actually put anywhere from seven to twelve volts on that line. It's regulated down to five volts by the 7805. Anyway, let's look at the scope. I know the scope doesn't look great. The screenshot doesn't look great because the refresh rate of the camera. Uh, anyway, so um, what I'm going to do is by default the output is at five volts BCC. Uh, and it stays there unless there's something within the detecting distance. So I'm going to put my hand right in front of the sensor. High frequency. I'm going to bring it further away. High frequency, lower frequency. The frequency gets lowered. I'm going to move my hand out of, out of space. I'm actually going to go over about a meter in front of it. About a meter in front of it. Foot. I'm going to move back further, further. 
until the scope, I would have to change the uh, time for division on the scope to actually see it. So, frequency will change based on how far away you are. So you can set that up to a counter module or a counter in software. Uh, you can set that. That's how you would would do it. Is you would you would uh, classify at what distance what the frequency was, and you could interface this easily with your Arduino. So that's the kit. Very easy to put together. Please let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching, everyone.